is an important day in American history because it's one of the few days that commemorates a true victory, a victory that the American people had to come together to achieve. It's a political victory. It's a legislative victory. It's a military victory. It's a cultural victory. It's a true thing that happened inside history. Um, it's important for us to come together and to remember how we work together across racial lines, across political lines, um, across cultural lines, in space and time, to make America's greatest victory a reality. And I do believe that the abolition of slavery was, in fact, the greatest victory that this country has ever achieved. Um, so, what I'd like to do now is sort of give you a sense of how I view Juneteenth. It's a delicate balance. We are here to honor and commemorate people who were sold as property, who had no control over their personal, political, economic, spiritual destiny. We are here to remember that there are significant social injustices. There are uh, long-term pain points that we all need to confront. But we are also here to ensure that we remember that Juneteenth is a celebration. Most people don't know that um, when the news was handed down after two and a half years, there were fireworks, there, were, there was cause for celebration for the first time in the lives of some people who had been in this country for 40, 50, 60 years had nothing to celebrate. And so we must also remember that this is a celebration. And I would like to say that the celebration is more important than the sacred, solemn part of this event. But the truth is we have to balance both in order to do justice and honor to those who came before us, not just blacks, but also whites, foreign and domestic, who did everything in their power to make this celebration possible. So, with that in mind, what I'd like to do is to honor the solemnity, the sacred hardship, um, with a moment of silence. And after that moment of silence, I'd like for us to, um, to greet one another in celebration um, to really commemorate this day. So, if you could take a moment, let's take 30, 40 seconds to reflect on the pain, the hardship, the journey, and all of the things that were necessary in order to make it through it. Let's have a moment of silence. Remember, remember what the legacy of slavery has brought in our country. Don't glance over it. Respect this part of our, our history. It's nothing for us to, um, we shouldn't be stuck there, but we should certainly remember it work together, believe in the better angels of your neighbors. For the wall to stand, while I read the general orders that were read on, 18, on June 19, 1865. Important orders by General Granger. The slaves are free. Headquarters District of Texas, Galveston, Texas, June 19, 1865. General orders number three. The people of Texas are informed that, in accordance with a proclamation from the Executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that between the employer and hired labor. The freedmen are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and to work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and that they will not be supported in idleness, either there or elsewhere. Thank you. Um, there are more people enslaved today than ever before. 40 million people find themselves in bondage. 25 million in forced labor, 15 million in forced marriages. These are young girls, sometimes young boys, but mostly young girls all over the world. Human trafficking is a real thing, and it's actually happening here in Evanston, here in Chicago, 
don't really have evidence of that. So this is a real thing. Another thing I'll say is the discussion about reparations. This is an important discussion that I think we're going to have more and more, especially as the presidential election ramps up. Regular business. Many of them have profited from slavery over the years. Um, one is Aetna. Aetna actually, which is the largest um, health insurance company in America now, I believe, they um, basically insured the uh, sort of the, the livelihood of slaves. So if slaves died, you can take out an insurance policy on your slave, and they made sure that um, you know if one of your slaves met at that time of death. Um, you know you can you can reap insurance benefits from that. Another um, is J.P. Morgan Chase, who uh, took thirteen thousand slaves as collateral, and when people couldn't pay their loans, they actually took. 1,200 slaves uh, and owned them. So J.P. Morgan Chase is one of those two. I actually bank with J.P. Morgan Chase, but we forgive, we never forget. Another company is uh, the railroad company, CSS and North, uh, Northfolk Southern. Um, they hired, they would rent, slave owners would rent their slaves to the railroad companies. Um, so there, there is a, a lot of a lot of blame to go around. What reparations look like is a, is, a, is a question for us all to determine together, I think, if in fact it happens one day. One of the really interesting ones for me is the Brooks Brothers. They actually manufactured and sold slave clothing. This particular piece here, uh, a friend of mine commissioned me to do it because they had reopened the story of Emmett Till. Um, he was a shock Chicago kid from the South Side, 14 years old. Went down to Mississippi for vacation for the summer. So he was tortured, brutalized in every way possible. Um, when his mom saw his body, um, it was grotesque. And she demanded that he be in an open casket so that the world could see what they had done to her boy. And when I was given this task, I tell people it was the hardest portrait I've ever done because I felt it so much spiritually. I felt that he was telling me through his essence that I don't want to be left to look like that person in the casket. I want people to remember me for who I am and who I was and what I looked like. And he was a gorgeous young man. And so this is my effort at Emmett Till and my contribution to the story of his life because that was before the Civil Rights Movement. Rosa Parks was after this incident and everything else was after this incident. Hey, Robin's here, the old person. <laughs> she, she said that. Oh, uh, I'm saying it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really that. Let's get these other folks around the floor. The Force E Power Foundation was founded uh, by me because my father was a great man. Taught all of his kids the work ethic. He taught all of his nine children the work ethic. And my dad cleaned a lot of houses on the North Shore. He raised nine of us, he bought a house, Never got any government assistance. Back then, as you know, Dolores, those people wouldn't take assistance. You guys know about that. They worked hard. They didn't complain. They didn't talk about the white man. They just worked. So when my father passed away, I decided to create a foundation. We have a lot of foundations, a lot of things going on for kids who are going to high school, going to college. There's nothing wrong with college. College is a great thing. But not all of us are meant to go to college. Some of us are meant to be, have, have, have a trade. If we didn't have a plumber, if we didn't have electricians, if we didn't have diggers, where would we be? We need those people. We send kids who want to go into a trade, give them scholarships and so forth, and we send them to a trade school to learn the trade. You know, I went through a stage. I had a liver transplant. 
okay? They gave me six months of a year to live. While I was recuperating, I'm not the type of guy that just to sit around. I gotta do something. So I got my ancestry.com and started studying about my family. I discovered that my great grandfather and my great great grandma were slaves. My great grandfather was born in slavery. Okay, my great great grandmother was a slave in New Madrid, Missouri. They escaped, and, and, and he had two other siblings. They escaped from there, from New Madrid, Missouri, to Iowa. And the reason they went to Iowa was because Iowa was a free state. My great grandfather met his wife there, who became, of course, my great grandma. They had a kid named Florence White. Okay? And Florence White was my grandmother. She met a guy in Tipton, Iowa, whose name was Harry Becky Pop. They got married. Now my great grandfather, he left Iowa and came to Everston in 1902. He built a house that is still standing today at 1812 Church Street. And when he came to Everston, he was a barber. Downtown Everston, but it wasn't downtown Everston at the time. We, we could be down there because we like swamps. <laughs> okay. But he was down there as a barber, but then you have a whole lot of black people here because there wasn't a whole lot of black folks around him. Okay. okay, so they cut white people's hair. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. Here's a black man back during that time who saved his money. Wow. Think about this. Saved his money, worked his butt off, and had a house built from scratch. Now, I, I, the reason I get into this, this whole story is I really respect them for all what they've done and what they've shown me. So I learned about Juneteenth. I said to myself with this foundation, if my grandfather and my great-grandfather, if they could do all what they and my dad, if they could do all what they've done without government assistance whatsoever, I should be able to do better than that. That's right. Because I got all kinds of opportunities. So I should be able to do better than that. So I had to do something by creating this foundation in the name of my father. And then I had to do something even more special. Because this foundation wasn't going to be like any other organization in Emerson, special minority organization, asking for government hand me -outs. I refused to do that because of their legacy. So I had to figure out how to raise money. Well, we raised money in the community, from community members. But besides that, I created Juneteenth soda. Because you got to have strawberry soda. You see this guy here? Yes. That's my great grandfather. And all the profits for this right here, all the profits goes to the Forest E. Power Foundation. Beautiful. That's where it goes. We need to be celebrated big time, along with everybody else, Juneteenth. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. It's amazing we escaped that fate. Blessed to live a life in the light, to bring light to the dark, and allow our past to shine away. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Mazel tov, I guess I should say. Emancipation of blacks is one thing, but why do we still feel like slaves? Especially since the number spans over 200K in one state, I guess they didn't get the memo of a new day. Regardless, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. A, procl a proclamation that would make America great is underway. No longer three-fifths of a man we stand and freedom is close enough to taste. And as the Civil War concludes and justice ensues, still in the Union States. But wait, I thought the rhetoric past wouldn't allow for enslavement to last, yet 
Only the Confederates could eat that cake. Make no mistake, the world slavery was only made to seize control and not only hold all the cards for the Game of Thrones they played, but also clone the images of free trade and capitalism to take place. It seems to me like we were played and the history books whitewashed. We've seen heroes made with a moral compass and integrity and honest aid to free those slaves and distribute justice in which our praise uplifted the notion of a nation that took pride in saying we'll all be equal someday. Yet still, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. It only took two years for that notion to be sustained and over another hundred for civil rights to take shape. Was it all worth the wait? Cause even till this day, I feel misplaced. Overused and underpaid. Limited opportunities presented my way. Living to a standard my color. My skin color didn't have a hand in creating. Ruled by a system that still oppresses my fate. But I don't wanna make this about race. Or insinuate that I'm being held back due to the pigment I display. Instead, I said praise to the day Real change broke through and allowed freedom to take shape. June 19th, 1865 will forever be a monumental day. So, celebrate, 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 and never forget. We need to build more bridges than walls. Well, these kids will play. Feel like the all the same. I know, you know, they know. What about? 